want to tell everybody about my experience on the Durango photo train this fall. What is a photo train, you ask? First of all, let me show you this. There we go. First, I was very fortunate to get on the train in the first place. I found out about it, and when I called, they were already booked out and full, so I got on the waiting list. And fortunately, somebody canceled, and so I got on. A photo train is a special event in the sense that it uh, stops during uh, the train ride from Durango to Silverton and Silverton on the way back. So it's really cool because what happens is at each one of these stops that they've got lined out, they stop the train, all of us photographers get off, we quickly set up our equipment, and then uh, they back up the train, and then when they give the ready signal, the train comes toward us. And so we're all set up there with our tripods and cameras and uh, clicking away. And it's called uh, a run-by. And there's probably about 10 on this particular trip. So it was very unique and different in the sense that this train stops, whereas the regular passenger train does not stop. It simply goes from Durango up to Silverton, makes a stop there, and then comes back. So for photographers, this was a lot of fun. So hop aboard and come ride with me. Here we are, blasting out of the Durango station at 7 in the morning, and uh, off we are headed uh, north. I can just imagine the people in Durango waking up to this uh, at 7 o'clock uh, every morning. At the rear of the train was the only open air car, and I decided I would board that one first, which I did. I thought it was a good idea, which it was for about 15 minutes. And then it really got uh, chilly, so I graduated to one of the enclosed cars, which was more warm and comfortable, and kept my camera warm and avoided battery drain. Almost enough to take your breath away because this beast was the very first shot. People were experimenting with their camera settings and, and things like that. It's called the Tacoma Power Plant, and it was... Uh, Pretty inspiring, actually, the power of this beast coming right at you as we are just a few feet uh, off the track. This was one of my favorite run-bys. I don't know exactly what the formal name is, but I call it side steam a really cool effect that uh, netted this photograph. Uh, most of the time the train would give us two run-bys so we'd have different angles uh, if you wanted and so on this particular shot I was on one side of the tracks and then another time I was on the other side of the tracks just for different viewpoints. This was a shot where we climbed up a bit of a hill. I'll tell you, there's just something about seeing that white billowing steam rising. 
and the black smoke coming around a corner that really gets you amped up to hopefully get a great shot of the passing train. And when you toss in the Animus River running alongside the train, you are set up for a winning combination. On to Silverton, the halfway point in our trip. The train provided a tasty brown bag lunch on the train for us, which hit the spot. As we pulled into Silverton, it was around noon. This was our fifth run-by, called the Arcade Building, as you can see, here in Silverton. The crew was happy to pose for a few photographs, but we didn't take too long for that, and we headed back down to Durango. Run by number six is Twin Bridges. It consists of two parallel bridges, hence the Twin Bridges name, crossing the Animus River. It was built in 1964 by the Denver Rio Grande Western Railroad. On to run by number seven. It's called the Needleton Tank, which is that big water tank that you see. It's no longer working. It hasn't been functional for sometime in the 1960s, the crew said. It is a neat photo op. As you can see, many of the photographers in our pack were uh, positioning themselves closer. I was kind of in the middle, and then there were several photographers in the back of me, so it was kind of jammed up there, but we did the best we could. It was neat. The water spout that you see on the tank is no longer functional, but the crew members put it down to kind of recreate uh, for photos um, how it would have been back when it was working and the train would be filled up with water. Another four and a half miles brought us to run by number eight, simply called Milepost 480.5. This was a neat one just because of the gorgeous San Juan Mountains in the distant background, blue skies, a lot of clouds. The autumn colors were pretty much past prime, but nonetheless, this was a lot of fun because we got two opportunities at this run by, so I stood on the right side of the track as the train was coming forward to me and then I did a rapid burst of uh, photos and then on the second run by I hopped on to the left side of those railroad tracks and pretty much did the same thing. After about a 30 minute ride we came to run by number nine and here it is it's called Teft Bridge. This was a beautiful one because we had again the Animus River uh, below uh, the train and the train just steaming across this old uh, uh, bridge. This was one where I would have loved to have a little bit more time. It was kind of crowded where we were shooting from so I didn't have the best vantage point because I had uh, a couple photographers right on my left. We were pressed for time so we all had to pile back into the railroad cars. Fortunately I saw this view as the railroad car had stopped and I managed to rush to the back of the open air car and snap off this photo before we headed to our final run by. It 
It was a full day, starting about 7 in the morning and ending around 4.45 or thereabouts, so it was uh, well worth it. Uh, the cost of the trip was just a bit over $400. And uh, if you have any comments or questions about the trip, by all means, feel free to leave a comment or a question in the section below, and I will try to answer it. So thanks for viewing, and we'll see you next time.